It is perhaps the only true constant. It governs all. Stars. Planets. Life. We know it by the sun rising and setting. And all 86,000 seconds of each day. Time. In truth, an unyielding ruler. It is here, and then it is gone. The question time asks us is, what will we do with each moment? And can we make the ones to come better than the ones we have known? At Portia, time is not a restraint. It is a call. A call to transcend it, to birth dreams, to scintillate senses, to forge out of raw materials and human passion, timelessness. All that so you might. In brief flashes or during long winding stretches. Completely. Utterly. Forget time even exists. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, Aktionärinnen und Aktionäre, dear shareholders, liebe Aktionärsvertreterinnen und Vertreter, als Vorsitzender des Aufsichtsrats der Porsche AG, Chairman of the Supervisory Board of die heutige Hauptversammlung, AG, I hereby open today's annual general meeting and assume the chairmanship of this meeting. Auch im Namen meiner Kolleginnen und Kollegen, I like to welcome you des Aufsichtsrats very much. und des Vorstands. Dear shareholders, Also on die Hauptversammlung findet in der Porsche Arena in Stuttgart statt und wird von hier aus als AGM durch hier in Stuttgart conducting as a virtual Es war uns im vergangenen Jahr ein besonderes Anliegen. Now last year it was particularly important to us to hold the first annual general meeting after our company's IPO in the form of an in-person event so that we could exchange ideas with you, our shareholders, on site. Now, the virtual format, however, has been tried and tested and is widely used. It allows you to actively participate in the annual general meeting with significantly less effort and at the same time It also makes our contribution to reduce environmental pollution as no travel is required to attend the annual general meeting. What's more, we also reduce costs for the company and therefore also for the shareholders. And for these reasons, the executive board has decided to invite shareholders to a virtual annual general meeting this year for the virtual annual meeting this year. I will chair the meeting and guide you through the meeting. Should I leave the stage for a short time, I appoint Miss Jordana Biogazzi as my deputy for this period. Now, in regard of the executive board, Mr. Dettel von Platen has sent apologies. He is unable to attend today due to an urgent professional commitment. All the other members of the executive board of Porsche AG are present in full. Ich begrüße den Vorstand. So, I would like to welcome the chairman of the executive board, Dr. Oliver Blume, as well as the members of the executive board, Mr. Lutz Meschke, Frau Barbara, Mrs. Barbara Frenkel, Herrn Andreas Hafner, Mr. Andreas Hafner, Herrn Sajad Khan, Mr. Sajad Khan, Herrn Albrecht Reimold, Mr. Albrecht Reimold, and Dr. Michael Steiner. Aufsichtsrat hat sich Frau Melissa Di Tonato Roos Mrs. Di Tonato Roos has apologized as a member of the Supervisor Board and is therefore not able to attend today's meeting due to that commitment. The other members of the Supervisory Board of the Porsche AG are also here in full. Zudem begrüße ich den Notar. I would also like to welcome the Notary Public, Dr. Peter Siegel, who is taking the notarial minutes of the meeting. Ebenfalls 
Also on the site are the company's proxies. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow me first to make some formal statements regarding today's annual general meeting. Today's annual general meeting was convened in due form and time. Convocation of the annual general meeting with the management's proposed resolutions was published in the Federal Gazette on 22nd of April 2024. Information and documents relating to this year's virtual annual general meeting can be found on our website under the tab Investor Relations. We have not received any requests for additions to the agenda and our shareholders can follow the entire annual meeting via the investor portal. The annual general meeting is furthermore simultaneously interpreted into the English language. The appropriate language setting can be selected from the website. In addition, my introductory remarks as well as those of the executive board will be also broadcast on the company's website for all other interested parties. My own introductory remarks and the report of the executive board will also be furthermore available as a recording on the company's website after the end of the annual general meeting. The list of participants can also be found in the investor portal and you can exercise your voting rights by electronic postal vote or by authorizing the proxies of the company or third parties via the same investor portal. Only ordinary shareholders of the company and their representatives are entitled to vote at this meeting. Now, if you would like to speak, you can register your contributions via the investor portal. This function is already available to you now. And then you will be invited to the technical check shortly after you have submitted your request to speak. I must reserve the right to restrict the right to speak and ask questions, particularly in the event that a lawful conclusion of the annual general meeting cannot otherwise be guaranteed. And so, I hereby stipulate that the right to information pursuant to Section 131, Clause 1 of the German Stock Corporation Act may only be exercised at the annual general meeting by means of video communication. Requests for information pursuant to Section 131, Paragraph 4, Sentence 1 of the German Stock Corporation Act may also be made via the investor portal until the end of the general debate. Duly registered shareholders were also able to submit statements in text form prior to the annual general meeting. The submitted statement can be viewed on the company's website. Now, if you would like to register an objection to a resolution passed at today's annual general meeting, you can also do so via the investor portal. This function has been activated for you since the start of the annual general meeting and will remain active until the end of this annual general meeting. And also until the end of the annual general meeting, you may be able to request submission via the investor portal and the close of the annual general meeting in accordance with section 131, paragraph 5, sentence 1 and sentence 2 of the German Stock Corporation Act to include questions in the minutes that were allegedly not answered or not answered sufficiently. As usual, recordings of the Angela meeting are not permitted and there is not going to be a verbatim record created of the AGM. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will now turn to the supervisory board's report. And then following my remarks, the executive board will present you with its report. This then will be followed by the general debate and at the end of the debate, the votes will be taken. At the beginning of my report, I would like to take this opportunity to once again express our special thanks and appreciation to the members of the Executive Board, Management and all employees of Porsche AG, as well as the employees of all the affiliated companies that do so on behalf of the entire Supervisory Board. 
auch das Jahr 2023. The year 2023 once again brought major challenges for Porsche AG. In particular, the political framework conditions for the automotive industry are changing and the transformation is progressing. So Sie alle haben mit Now, you all have, with your exceptional personal commitment and responsibility, made a major contribution that the preceding fiscal year was for Porsche AG, despite these challenges, once again a successful one, and that also in year 2023 we were able to set the benchmark with our products. At the headquarters in Zuffenhausen, we had the fifth million Porsche car coming off the production line. What's more, we were also able to celebrate the 60th birthday of the Icon 911 with a limited special edition. Now, with the new Porsche 718 Spider RS, Porsche was able to bring the so far most powerful version of this mid-engine roadster to the road. The Cayenne was extensively reworked. And with the Mission X, the Porsche AG in the summer of 2023 produced a new innovative project car. And also economically, 2023 was for the Porsche AG, despite the big geopolitical crisis, a successful fiscal year. Group revenue went up from 6, 7 million euros to 40.5 billion euros. This accords a growth rate of 7.7% over the preceding fiscal year. The operative group result came to 7.4 billion euros and was thus 9.3% higher than in the preceding fiscal year. Deliveries reached in 2023 a new all-time record. The operative group revenue was, as in the year before, at 18%. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to address in detail the work for the past financial year 2023. I will concentrate once more on the key topics. An extensive presentation can be seen from the extensive report on the pages 1868 from our annual report. The supervisory board has also in the financial year 23 conducted the supervisory duties incumbent on it according to the articles of association and also addressed in due detail the situation, the perspectives of the Porsche AG. And in this, the supervisory board monitored the work of the executive board in conducting the management of the company and consulted it regularly on all central questions, also in view of the recommendations under the German Corporate Governance Code. Together with the executive board, especially in collaboration with the chairman of the executive board, I was in regular contact and discussed with him questions of strategy, planning, business development, the risk situation, risk management and compliance of the company. Key events that were instrumental for the development of the situation and the management of the company Informierte mich der Vorsitzende des Vorstands. The chairman of the executive board kept me duly and promptly informed. As the entire committee, I was furthermore integrated in the strategic considerations and decision makings of the executive board. In addition to the reports of the chairman of the executive board, I also received regular reports of the CFO and of the member of the executive board responsible for sales. The the Provisor Board met at four meetings in the preceding fiscal year, and furthermore, two of the resolutions were taken by writing circular votes. That meant that we had a participation rate of a gratifying 96%. During the meetings of the committees, there was only one meeting where one participant was prevented from attending. In its meetings, the Supervisor Board addressed in detail the product program, the vehicle projects of Porsche AG, the strategic decisions regarding investments in cell material manufacture with the expansion of the worldwide leasing and financing business, as well as with the acquisition of further business investments of HP management, 
GmbH. Ein Schwerpunkt der Tätigkeit One focal point of the supervisor board was furthermore on a further optimization of the system process availability of executive board members, which is submitted to the AGM today for approval. As you can see from the convocation to the AGM, with this adjustment, we are looking particular at the short-term incentives to have the previous financial target capital return replaced by the financial KPI net cash flow margin. Furthermore, as another ESG criteria, Employee satisfaction has been added. One key element in the consultation work of the supervisor board were personnel issues of the executive board. As of the 1st of November 2023, Mr. Sajjad Khan began as a new member of the executive board with his mandate. Mr. Khan is responsible for area of car IT. The appointments of Mrs. Barbara Fenkel, Mr. Albrecht Reinbold and Dr. Michael Steiner were prolonged in line with their terms. And finally, the supervisory board also looked at the recommendations and initiations of the German Corporate Governance Code. In December of 2023, the supervisory board then together with the executive board submitted its annual declaration of conformity according to paragraph 61 of the German Stock Corporation Act. This declaration of conformity is to be found from the website of the company. On an basis. Conflicts of interest of supervisory board members were in financial year 2023 neither submitted nor were detectably indicated. The supervisory board has formed five committees the presiding committee, the audit committee, the nomination committee, the mediation committee, and the so called related party committee. The presiding committee met in financial year for eight times. The audit committee met four times. Other committees met in the financial year 23. Did not convene at all. The presiding committee in its meeting addressed in particular the preparation of the issues to be addressed in the supervisory board as well as the long-term succession plan. The audit committee in its meetings addressed in particular the financial reporting, the reports on the risk management, compliance, as well as the personnel changes in the supervisory board were not reported in the, yeah, the report. The team worked together successfully during the reporting year. As you can see from the convocation to the AGM, election of all 10 employee representatives is due for re-election. We note with pleasure that all 10 of them have submitted the agreement that they're available for another term. term. So the supervisory board, based on the recommendations of its nomination committee, suggests to the supervisory board to have all shareholder representatives granted another term as members of the supervisory board of the Porsche AG. Which brings me to the annual audit for the fiscal year 2023. The annual report submitted by the executive board as well as the consolidated financial report for fiscal year 23 as well as the summarized management report were audited by Ernest and Young GmbH, KKG, Wirtschaftsprüfungsgesellschaft from Stuttgart. The auditor has not submitted any objections and therefore for the corresponding financial statements submitted and reserved. Audit. In its meeting on the 28th of February 2024, the supervisory board approved the annual financial statement, the interim annual financial statement, and the management, including the non financial declaration for Porsche AG and for the group for financial year 2023, as well as the declaration on the management and the appropriation earnings 
wesentliche material haben wir mit dem Abschluss audit issues were discussed together with the auditor die verantwortlichen Abschlussprüfer the responsible auditors have furthermore submitted their report on the key audit findings on the unfinished statement and report and were available for the supervisor board for any additional explanation if so requested the supervisor board then also approved the annual financial statement and followed the suggestion made by the executive board for the promotion of earnings. This means that the annual financial statement of 23 has thus been noted. The remuneration board, according to paragraph 162 from the German Stock Corporation Act, is today for ratification and approval. The auditor has also audited the content of the remuneration board over and above the legal stipulations and it has found that the legal stipulations and declarations are duly contained and in all key elements uh, complies with the financial accounting standards of the German Stock Corporation Act. Ladies and gentlemen, so much on the work of the supervisory board in the preceding fiscal year. The current fiscal year 2024 will once again be a challenging one. It will be characterized in particular by the new launches in four model series. And it will therefore will be the financial year with the largest model offensive in the company's history. And on this, our chairman of the executive board, Dr. Oliver Blume, will now explain to you in more detail how the past financial year panned out, what the current situation is, and the outlook for the current financial year. Dr. Blume, please, the floor is yours. Porsche has always been shaping dreams on the racetrack. Dreams that come alive through milliseconds and lap times. For a car to succeed in this environment, the complete package must be flawless. The thrill of acceleration and the sensation of control unite enthusiasts across generations. The new Taycan Turbo GT is dedicated to that enthusiasm. Every turn of the wheel, every push on the pedal is a step closer to the goal. The chase down, the fastest lap. Porsche's commitment to motorsport innovation pushes the limits of electric mobility and lap times all over the world. The new Taycan Turbo GT. Dear shareholders, I too would like to extend a warm welcome to you all. We're delighted you could join us. Exciting sports cars, that's Porsche. That's what Porsche stands for and has done since the very beginning. An iconic brand, a unique spirit, and of course, our racing DNA. When we step up to face the competition, we want to win to post the fastest lap on the track, as we just saw with the Taycan Turbo GT. And we also want to push things to the limit as a company, to, to deliver the best performance always. For our customers and fans, for our exceptional team, and for you, of course, our shareholders. In diesem Sinne war you could say that 2023 was an extremely fast lap for Porsche. In fact, it was a lap for the record books. We had strong financial results, better than ever before. I'll get to the details of that in a moment. And we wouldn't be Porsche if we didn't aim to do the same the next time round. Or better yet, 
beat the record again. But sometimes you sit in the cockpit and realize this lap won't be a new record. The conditions aren't right. The weather, the tires, the traffic out on the track, and because the car has to be reconfigured for the new conditions, to attack with all its strength at the next opportunity. In 2024, these are the conditions we face, but we're already seeing great opportunities ahead for the sake of our customers and fans, for the sake of our company, and indeed for the sake of you, our shareholders. 2024 is our year of new product launches, a very challenging year, one that we're approaching with resolve and foresight. Aber auch gleich mehr dazu. More on that in a moment. Lassen Sie uns zunächst einen But first, let's take a look back at a very successful and highly profitable year 2023. And let me say one thing at the outset. My colleagues, the Porsche team, we can all be very proud of what we've accomplished. Thank you so much for your tremendous work. We were able to offer our customers exciting products across all model lines, despite all the challenges. We delivered more than 320,000 cars to customers around the world. That's more than ever before. But remember, volume alone is not our measuring stick. Value creating sustainable growth is more important than volume. Value driven by a strong product mix with individual, exclusive and exciting sports cars. Group sales revenue reflects that. It grew significantly again in 2023 to about 40.5 billion euros. We had roughly 117,000 euros of sales revenue per car. The previous year, it was about 112,000 euros, and the year before that, 100,000 euros, 17% in just two years. One reason for this is that our customers purchased a lot more special equipment, and our group operating profit also grew to about 7.3 billion euros. This amounts to a strong group operating return on sales of 18%. In the automotive business, it was actually 18.6%. Our team put in an outstanding effort. After all, the second half of the year in particular was very challenging, particularly with respect to the changing framework conditions. Since 2020, we have increased earnings in stages by almost 75% and increased returns by three percentage points. Over the same period, we have made wide-ranging investments in digitalization, in innovation and new products, and in the unique Porsche brand experience. Like our 75 years of Porsche sports cars anniversary last year. Yet even so, we maintained consistently high returns. How did we do that? By selling more cars. We sold more cars at higher prices while keeping our costs in check. Of course, We'd like you, our shareholders, to share in our success. We are therefore proposing to the annual general meeting a dividend of 2.31 euros per preferred share and a dividend of 2.30 euros for each ordinary share. This comes to a total of roughly 2.1 billion euros, just under 41% of group profit after tax. And we're sticking to the plan. In the future, we would like to increase this share to roughly 50%. All in all, Porsche put in a great performance in 2023, and it delivered. Our financial position is robust, highly profitable even in uncertain times. It was the first full financial year since our IPO. And today we can state, in 2023, we fulfilled our ambitious forecasts. Let us take a look ahead to the current year and beyond. 
2024 presents enormous challenges. The political situation in many parts of the world is tense, as is the economic situation. The supply chain risks are considerable, as is, accordingly, uncertainty in the markets. And for China in particular, we assume things will remain tough for the time being, a difficult environment. The response could easily be to go into defensive mode, to seek shelter, put everything on hold, research, development, investments, keep a low profile until the storm has passed and the situation improves. We don't do that. After all, Porsche has always forged its own way and always with our customers in mind. We face the headwinds. We go the extra mile. Even if it takes more effort, more time, more money. And even if it temporarily puts the squeeze on returns. Because we think long term. And because we believe that it will always pay off in the long run. What does that mean in concrete terms? This year, we expect group sales revenue of between 40 and 42 billion euros and a group operating return on sales of 15 to 17 percent. We're taking this bump in our stride, not happily, mind you, of course not, but in view of our returns in recent years, this is just a temporary setback. We're sticking with our long-term target of a group operating return on sales of more than 20%. For Porsche, 2024 is a year of product launches, with the biggest year launch-wise in the company's history, the Panamera, Macan, Taycan, and most recently, the 911, all with major upgrades, and the, and the Cayenne before that. All in all, five of six model lines are new, all in quick succession. This means that starting this year, we have an almost completely new product portfolio on the market. We have halved the average age of our model lines and we're keeping the portfolio fresh and attractive with further innovations for the years to come, too. We will have the strongest product range in the history of Porsche. In short, we're holding all the cards, and now is the time to play them. However, having so many launches in such a short period of time is an extremely complex task. And as always, there are two things we're absolutely focused on, quality and satisfied customers. Over the past two years, we have been able to improve quality yet again in terms of claims per car by another 25%. And that, in spite of great technological complexities. We're approaching the model change with the utmost care, and we're ramping up production with quality top of mind. Of course, we're feeling the effects of the model changes in our sales numbers and in our sales revenue. With the outgoing models, we have a gradual winding down in terms of units. We will then introduce the new models in stages, by market and variant. We call this the V effect. This is normal but it has to be well managed. That's difficult enough with one model line. We're doing it with five in one year. The good news is that we have already made a start in the market with the Cayenne, Panamera and Taycan. The Macan and the 911 are well on their way and will follow in the coming months. Of course, new launches involve a lot of upfront costs for R&D, for the production ramp-up, and for marketing. But the money is well spent because it lays the foundation for our future profits today and for our share of those Profits. Last year alone, we invested about 5 billion euros in research and development and in the Porsche ecosystem. This is the largest amount spent in the history of our company. We're pursuing digitalization at Porsche with great resolve to the tune of 4, to the tune of 4 billion euros in the coming five years. Of that, more than 350 million euros will be invested in data and artificial intelligence. 
intelligence. Now let's take a look at the current figures. In the first three months, we delivered 77,640 cars to customers, fewer than in the first quarter of 2023, as expected. Sales revenue, profits and returns were also down. We foresaw that too. Behind all of this lies a clear, consistent strategy and a well-defined concept of how to implement it. We're gaining momentum for future success, for new record lap times as it were. The cornerstone of our strategy is our products, the heart of Porsche. Let's start with our icon, the 911 which we have been constantly improving for more than 60 years. Just last week, we presented the latest one, the first 911 with a hybrid drive system, or to be more pre precise, an exceptionally lightweight performance hybrid, inspired by motorsport, even more power, even greater dynamic performance. One thing is already clear, this sports hybrid technology is a perfect fit with the 911 Carrera GTS. You are familiar with our tough, toughest measuring stick, the Nürburgring Nordschleife. The GTS beat its impressive predecessor there by 8.7 seconds. Our engineers have revamped its design and improved its aerodynamics. The interior has a fresh new feel. We've upgraded its standard equipment and significantly extended its connectivity. After many test kilometers, I firmly believe that this 911 will set new standards once again. Then we have the Taycan, which started the area of electromobility at Porsche. Now comes the next generation, and it's better in practically every respect. The new versions have more power, a longer range, they accelerate faster, and they charge more quickly and more reliably. In short, they've reached an entirely new level. Everything we've learned with the Taycan over a five-year period has gone into this car. For example, it has a new, even more powerful electric motor on the rear axle. We have a new cell chemistry in the high-voltage battery, and this also boosts its performance. Everything we have learned in the last five years, it's gone into this car. A more powerful electric motor on the rear axle, a new cell chemistry in the high-voltage battery, this also boosts its performance. We achieve top marks in high-performance charging and range, and it has better recuperation. In other words, we get more energy back when we break. What's more, we've now brought our GT tradition into the electric era, with the Taycan Turbo GT, the most powerful series production Porsche of all time. It promptly set records on the Nürburgring Nordschleife and at Laguna Seca. And now for the new Macan, our best seller for many years. Now also fully electric. We believe that it's also going to be the highest performing model in its segment. Whether we're talking about aerodynamics or connectivity, range or driving dynamics, we're setting new standards with the innovations on offer in the new Macan. And with the new software platform, we're raising digitalization to a whole new level. What you see here is a head-up display with augmented reality technology. In other words, important display elements are visually integrated into the real world. Navigation arrows, for example. While driving, you see the image as if looking at an 87-inch display from a distance of 10 meters. Our charging planner is also setting new standards in route planning. It calculates the best route, including charging stops online and in just seconds, taking into account the traffic situation and a range of previously selected options. These digital applications put us at the forefront of the global competition. 
Dann der neue Then Panamera. There is the new Panamera. The third model generation is more digital, more luxurious and more efficient. It too offers more powerful drivetrains, an entirely new control concept. Here too, we've also expanded our hybrid range and we're setting new standards with a new active ride premium suspension system. This bandwidth between comfort and dynamic performance is unprecedented. Braking, steering, accelerating. Active ride keeps the car level at all times. It almost completely absorbs bumps and jerks. Using sensors, the system decides whether the wheels compress or extend, each one individually many times per second. And if I want, the system can even overcompensate against the acting forces and make the car Car, take the bends like a motorcycle. It's an incredible driving experience, an absolute world first in this form and with this, this degree of reproducibility. And we're also really pushing on with a new Cayenne this year. We have given our successful SUV an all-round upgrade in terms of its drivetrain, chassis and design with its equipment and control concept. We've presented a third hybrid variant and the Turbo E-Hybrid, the most powerful Cayenne of all times. The Cayenne was the first Porsche to feature the new HD Matrix LED lights, 32,000 individually controllable micro-LEDs per headlight, bright, homogeneous, precise light. It adjusts dynamically to the driving situation every 16 milliseconds. And it offers completely new possibilities, lane brightening, in road work, in roadworks and narrow lane lighting, or a special high beam for the motorway, unique anywhere in the world. We believe that with all of this, we're setting new technological standards yet again, and we're also again defining what distinguishes Porsche. Incomparable design, pioneering technology, and uncompromising high quality, characteristic Porsche performance and a unique driving experience with a focus on fast travel and sustainability. We're very broadly positioned in this regard with innovative drive technologies to fulfill different customer wishes all around the world. Eine balanced sales distribution in the global markets is a key factor for us. It makes our business model highly robust. We have significantly improved this balance in recent years. We were benefiting from it already in 2023. We will further optimize this distribution. We will continue to strengthen the overseas region and make the best possible use of our opportunities in the other market regions. As you will undoubtedly know, we celebrated 75 years of Porsche sports cars in 2023. It was a special anniversary marked by some superb events. Take the Rennsport reunion in California, the biggest event that Porsche has ever held. More than 90,000 Porsche enthusiasts attended and 80,000 fans of our brand came together at the Porsche Festival at the Hockenheim Ring. All this just further underlines that the Porsche brand is an icon. It has the power to bring people together across generations all over the world. At the same time, Porsche is exclusive, highly individual, and for many, the fulfillment of a very personal dream. We believe this combination is unique. This heritage is a gift and a duty. It is our responsibility to preserve it and lead it into the future. Through the greatest transformation that the automotive industry has ever experienced, that is our ultimate goal. And it will remain so. We will therefore continue to sharpen the profile of the Porsche brand. We want to inspire our customers time and again, whenever and wherever they come into contact with our brand.
Wir schaffen dafür to do this, we are creating new innovative formats. The new Porsche Studio in Singapore is a great example, as is our new Porsche Now concept with its pop-up stores. We open these for short periods in certain big cities around the world. They're fascinating, f- fantastic places to experience our brand and our products, modern, urban, and very popular among our new target groups. We're also upgrading our existing Porsche centers. Destination Porsche heißt The new concept is called Destination Porsche. We'll roll it out via more than 600 projects by the end of the decade. Our relationship with our dealer organization is based on mutual trust, and we keep them closely involved. Early this year, we looked at our many new innovations together in Singapore. More than 2,000 representatives from our dealerships around the world were present. Our customer service division is also a central point of contact, which is why we've taken it back in-house in Europe with our new customer relations hubs. Studies have shown that the number of well-off people who can afford our products will continue to grow. That's an outstanding outlook for us long-term, and that's all around the world. So we are making Porsche ownership even more individual with even more opportunities for customers to customize their Porsche down to the smallest detail, all the way to an exclusive one-off car. Our option program is legendary. Now we have upgraded it further with a new spin, complementing our exclusive manufacturer. We now offer almost unlimited possibilities. Our customers also want to see a familiar digital environment in their cars. The smartphone world inside the cabin, so to speak. That said, their preferences can be very different, depending on where we are in the world. As a global brand, we want to take this into account. We're working with strong partners to make that happen. Here is one example. Our customers can control car functions directly via the My Porsche app in the Apple CarPlay, It's an innovative, personalized user experience, and we are the first manufacturer worldwide to offer it. We're also expanding our collaboration with Google. Here, too, we aim to integrate their services even more fully into our cars, for example, navigation, voice control, and the app ecosystem. Our customers in China, on the other hand, use their own digital ecosystem and platforms for news, chat, entertainment, and payments. We are working on integrating them as well. And we are investing heavily in this. In the first quarter of 2024 alone, we've spent several hundred million euros in digital and software investments. With Applied Intuition, for example, a company based in Silicon Valley, California, and one of the world's leading providers of automotive software. We want to benefit from that knowledge and experience and jointly develop more of our own software solutions for Porsche in the future, faster and even more focused on the desires of our customers. Car IT is a top priority for us and we have given it the corresponding role in the organization, in a new executive portfolio with Sajad Khan. Sajad has been on board for more than seven months now, and I have to say that with his expertise and experience, he has proved a huge asset. He has already been the source of important drive and direction, especially in close collaboration with our executive executive board member for development, Michael Steiner. A perfect match. Never before has our industry experienced such fundamental change. This presents a great challenge to every car manufacturer. It's like running a marathon, and I would say that we have already covered a third of the distance, but we still have a long road ahead of us. We know that we can only master this challenge as a team.
Which is why we're driving the transformation in the company together with our colleagues. Because one thing is clear, Porsche would not be Porsche without our fantastic team, without the people who work so hard every day to enable our customers to make their dreams come true. Let me conclude with one final key point, sustainability, a key pillar of our strategy. For us, it's one of the most important tasks of our time. It is our shared responsibility to ensure that the world is worth living in for future generations. We take a holistic view of sustainability. Business success, environmental consciousness and social responsibility are not contradictory. They complement one another. Indeed, they are mutually dependent. Our goal is sustainable and value-creating growth. The electrification of our vehicle range reflects that. Our product strategy is designed so that in 2030 we could deliver more than 80% of our new vehicles to our customers as fully electric vehicles. Of course, that depends on demand and on the development of e-mobility in the different regions of the world. We've already taken many steps. Our sites in Zuffenhausen, Weissach and Leipzig are already working with a carbon-neutral balance sheet. We have another very important target, we're working towards a carbon-neutral balance sheet across the entire value chain for newly built cars by 2030, from production and use to recycling. Electrifying our vehicle fleet plays an important rail role in this. To be precise, by 2030, we aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the use phase of Porsche cars by 70% compared to 2022. The all-electric Macan represents an important step towards this goal. It is produced in Leipzig on a carbon-neutral basis. The plant already uses 100% green electricity, and it covers its heating requirements with biomethane and biomass. We also support the expansion of renewable energy to meet the electricity needs of all electric Macan fleet during the use phase on a biomodel basis. At Porsche, we take responsibility. We see ourselves as a partner in society. We're consistent in our social commitment at all our sites around the world. One great example was racing for charity at Le Mans. For every lap that our works cars complete, we will donate 750 euros again this year. Last year, we raised 911,000 euros for social projects. And social responsibility also means we add our voice. We stand up for democracy and freedom, for diversity and openness, for respect and tolerance. Together with others, we stand for everything that has made our country strong over the decades and will continue to make it strong. That's my personal commitment as a citizen of our country, as a father, and as the CEO of Porsche. Meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and gentlemen, doing the right things and doing them right, that's what's important. That's what we focus on. That's what has made us so successful at Porsche for so many years and will continue in this way in the future. Porsche delivered in 2023. We struck an even better balance in our sales and we achieved a strong result. 2024 is a year of new product launches and we will make the most of it for the biggest year of product launches in Porsche's history, a year to build momentum, to hit the ground running in 2025. We are guided by what has defined us for more than 75 years. We make dreams come true.
Herr Dr. Blume, vielen Dank für Ihre Ausführungen. Well, thank you very much for your comments, Dr. Blume. Meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to take this opportunity to say goodbye to those of you who have followed the broadcast of the AGM via the internet. Thank you very much for your interest in Porsche AG.